Hi everybody, Amber here with the Peoria Public Library and I have another quick craft for you and today it's actually going to be a twofer. Um, the first thing we're going to make is something that's used a lot in especially high fantasy and historical fiction uh, as well as um, mentioned in history although it's not made the original way. What we're going to make today is parchment parchment paper. Um, obviously it's not real parchment because um, I don't think I could tolerate making that. Uh, one, I don't have the supplies. Two, I don't have the stomach for it. So let's go with making our own faux parchment paper. So what I have to do this is I have some regular printer paper. You can actually use uh, recycled paper. Um, you could use colored paper if you want. I actually got this out of my printer where this paper has been kind of crinkled and damaged so it wouldn't look very good if I had to turn it in for something professional or for a project or something like that um, but I don't want to let it go to waste so you just take this piece of paper right here and crumple it up take your anger out on it uh, do be a little careful not to rip it it's, it's fine if you do because it'll add some uh, aging to the paper but um, try to be careful then I unfold it and you can start uh, the next step from there but I like to just crumple it up and give it a good crinkle several times with several pieces of paper until I get something really kind of soft almost I, I've broken a lot of the fibers in here uh, so it it actually pretty soft and it's super wrinkly and this is going to be great for the next step so once you have your paper all crumpled scrumpled crunched and just a mess we're going to get to the messy part now I have two different things that you can use to age your paper um, in these two containers I have something not a lot of adults have in their house um, leftover coffee and then I have some brewed tea here. Uh, leftover coffee, yeah, this is kind of like the, the dregs of the coffee pot um, where it's almost too bitter to drink, but you're talking to the girl who adds a little bit of coffee to her milk. So, you know, uh, you can use coffee you have in your house or you can dig out the decaf you keep for those weird guests that come over every once in a while uh, to make it pretty dark. Uh, the darker the uh, coffee or tea, the more color is going to come into your uh, paper. This is actually, I had some tea that was a berry flavored tea, so it came out pretty pink. Uh, the reason I use this is I had a couple of bags left over and uh, the bags had deteriorated, so there was no way I was drinking it, so I might as well use it for a craft. So you take your crumpled up paper and all you got to do is take your paper and stick it into your tea. Uh, make sure and get it good and coated. But remember, the more you coat it, the more soft the paper is going to get, the more chance of ripping is going to happen. You don't want to scrunch it at this point because you're going to just end up uh, damaging your paper in the way that you don't want to damage it. So I've got this and I'm going to just very gently shake it off and get my next supplies. Close this up because liquid and computers do not mix. So we've got wet paper that smells like tea. Take my supplies. And I have my next two supplies that I'm going to need. I have a cookie sheet, which I'm going to take this piece of paper and very carefully, so I don't rip it, at least not too much, I'm going to take it and spread it out onto my cookie sheet. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat, uh, but here we go. We've got it nice and flat. And then I am going to take a standard hair dryer, plug it in and blow it until it is dry. Um, it will take several minutes 
if you don't have a blow dryer to hand or you don't want to use a blow dryer because it's noisy, uh, you can throw it into a low and slow oven for several minutes, like 250. Uh, I don't usually do the oven method, method simply because I think it takes longer than blow drying. So uh, when you're done, you're going to end up with something nice and crinkly. You can roll it up. As you can see, this got a couple of holes in it. Sometimes I like to take the edges and rip them a bit so that it gives a little more uh, aging to it. You can, uh, if you're an adult and you can handle it, um, or if you're younger and you have supervision, you can uh, take some lighter matches and burn the edges, but please be careful with that. It's not uh, an easy thing to do and you will burn the paper and you could end up burning a lot more than the paper. Uh, as for the tea that I did, this actually dyed it kind of bluish purple. And on one end here, uh, some of the coffee stained it too when I was blow drying it. So it's got a nice brownish edge to it. So there you go. You've got some parchment paper that you can use to send letters to your friends. You can use it. I used it one time for invitations to a party. Um, so it's a lot of fun and a good, easy project to do. Now I've lost part of my supplies for my next craft. Let me get that. Very important supply. Uh, the next thing we're going to make is kind of a fun one. I'm gonna make some potion bottle jewelry. Now, this is mostly just piecing supplies together. What I have for supplies is I have this itty bitty potion bottle that I got out of the jewelry section of a craft store. Uh, they usually come in pairs, so I've got two right there, and they don't just come in that shape, they also come in this shape. And then we get some micro glitter. Uh, this is one of my favorite crafting supplies. I know it also is a favorite of one of my coworkers. Uh, she loves when I have glitter around, so it's uh, just a good thing to have. Now, a very important supply, something that you should uh, have when doing micro glitter, um, and you want to make sure you have plenty of, is an itty bitty funnel. Most funnels, especially cooking funnels, are not going to be this tiny, so I'm being really, really uh, specific and using just a bit of paper that I've rolled up and tucked into my potion bottle here. I have some light purple micro glitter. Uh, I believe I bought this for a t-shirt project several years ago. I got some shiny purple glitter that's a bit fluorescent colored. And all you want to do is I like to have a piece of paper underneath my project. I hope that wasn't glitter. And put a little bit in and just give it a couple taps. And there we go, it starts filling up. Yep, I think I spilled glitter. Oh good, it had its lid on, so we're safe. Get a second color. Mostly I just wanna use this for a little bit of contrast. Now this one has a lid on it and it's not going to work to shake it into something so I need to pop the lid off and given that I've already dropped stuff today it's probably not the smartest idea. But take my second glitter, make sure that I have my funnel in pretty tight and add a little to my funnel. Move this safely out of the way so that I don't spill it. And shake it down into my potion bottle. Here we go. I have a nice two-toned, it's kind of hard to see, uh, glitter. Then, that's the other thing I dropped. It comes with a stopper. 
using just a basic glue uh, or you can use a stronger glue like super glue uh, but you can just use a basic glue to seal the stopper in so that it doesn't come out and spill glitter everywhere because while these stoppers do hold uh, in place for the most part you don't want to be out somewhere and have it uh, come apart and get messed up on your shirt or your clothing or God forbid you spill glitter in the library. Um, that's a good threat to use. Uh, I do not recommend doing it. Uh, once you have your glitter sealed and uh, ready to make into jewelry, I just went to the craft store and I bought a couple of basic necklace chains. You can also use these uh, with earring jewelry. I used to have a lot more jewelry making supplies. I actually gave them away when I got out of jewelry making supplies several years ago. Um, so I had to go buy more stuff. You're also going to need to get some jump rings. These are pretty inexpensive. They come, I think there's like over a hundred in here. I didn't really need over a hundred, but I couldn't find a smaller batch. So um, one last thing you're going to need is you are probably going to need some needle nose pliers and that is so that you can separate the jump ring and put it back together so that we have, as you can see, this jump ring into the necklace and into the cork stopper. Then I can just take this necklace and put it on and I have a nice cute potion bottle necklace to wear uh, whenever I'd like. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I hope you find these supplies real easily. I find them everywhere and I hope we get to see you in the library soon as we begin to reopen. Thanks. Bye.